All right, in this video, we'll learn how to calculate the pH of a weak acid where we have to solve the quadratic equation. So that kind of stinks, but uh, sometimes we have to do it. So let's say we've got 0.1 molar HClO2. So that was one of our very strongest of weak acids. And it's got a Ka that's kind of large, actually, 1.1 times 10 to the minus 2 at room temperature. So we need to start off by writing the Ka reaction. So pause the video and write down the Ka reaction and then unpause it and check. Okay, so if you're back, the Ka reaction is the acid reacting with water. So water is H2O. <laughs> Hopefully you know that. And uh, the acid is going to give a proton to water. And so that turns the water into H3O+, plus, which of course it's going to affect the pH. And the acid by itself, right, is now the conjugate base, so ClO2 minus, and we know that weak acids tend to have fairly strong conjugate bases. We're going to write out the ice chart, and again, we're free to use pressures, moles per liter, molarity, or moles. However, there's not much sense in using moles for a problem like this, so it just gives us a lot of extra headache. We can go ahead and we could line out the liquids because they have an effective concentration of 1. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to make that assumption there that the original concentration of hydronium in water is zero. Even though that's 10 to the minus 7, we're going to say that that's going to be negligible. So the change, minus x, plus x, plus x. So this looks very familiar from the last video. So essentially the setup is identical. All right, now we're going to solve for the equilibrium constant. So we know Ka is the concentration of hydronium at equilibrium times by ClO2 minus divided by the original HClO2 equilibrium concentration. And what was that value? So 1.1 times 10 to the minus 2. And we've solved for that in terms of x's. So it's x times x on the top. So I'll write x squared. And on the bottom, it is 0.1 minus x, right? So you might be tempted to say, oh, wow, what a pain, right? Can we just go ahead and solve this equation here? And that would involve us using the 5% rule. So if we can do that, then uh, that makes life much easier because then we can say x squared is just 0.1 times by Ka. And if we want to know x, then we just square root both sides. And that gives us x. And by my calculation, that is 0 0.0332. So if we want to know the percent ionization, that is equal to x over 0.1 times by 100. So we're just looking at the fraction that broke down, which is x, the original concentration, which was 0.1, and we're just making that ratio times by 100. And I get something that is way, way bigger, right? So it is 33%. So in our calculation, 33% has broken down. And so if we use this approximation, we'll end up with an error in our pH calculation that is much larger than we can actually measure. So we need to solve the quadratic equation. Bummer. So we need to start back at this equation here. So Ka, 1.1 times 10 to the minus 2, is equal to x squared over 0.1 minus x. And we're going to have to kind of cross multiply this out to look like a quadratic equation. So we can cross multiply by 0.1 minus x. So it'll be x squared is 0.1 minus x times by 1.1 times 10 to the minus 2. And if we go ahead and we kind of distribute that out, we get something like x squared is equal to 1.1 times 10 to the minus 3 minus 1.1 times 10 to the minus 2x. All right, we need to get all the x's on one side. So that's x squared plus 1.1 times 10 to the minus 2x minus 1.1 times 10 to the minus 3 equals 0. And remember our quadratic equation, right? So we've got ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And we've got two roots. So x is plus, or sorry, minus b plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. So in our problem here, right, what do we have? So b is this term right here. So it is minus 1.1 times 10 to the minus 2 plus or minus, so we're probably going to take the positive root, otherwise we're going to end up with a negative overall number, which is bad. So b squared, 1.1 times 10 to the minus 2 squared minus 4. a is the value in front of x squared, so there's a 1 there, even though we don't write it. Well, we can write it, there you go. And c, uh, negative 1.1 times 10 to the minus 3. So there's lots of these double negative tricks here that can throw you up. So divided by 2 times by a. 
And again, if you take the positive and negative root, you either get 0 0.0281 or you get negative 0 0.039. And we can actually throw away the negative root. That is physically impossible because we can't have a negative concentration. So, oh, nice. Okay, so now we've gone through all that extra hard work, right? We want to find the pH. The pH is the negative log of the hydrogen concentration, right? That's just equal to x in our problem. So if we take the negative log of 0 0.0281, we get 1.55. So if we look at that, right, we can say, well, it's acidic, which makes sense. Now, 0.1 molar of a strong acid, right? We saw had a pH of 1. Uh, we saw 0.1 molar of a very weak acid, and I think we looked at acetic acid, which was quite a weak acid, had a pH of 2.87. And our acid today had a Ka that was several times bigger than the acetic acid, so that means it's going to be much more acidic. So the pH is much closer to that of a strong acid than it was that wimpy old acetic acid. So that was a pretty long problem, so pat yourself on the back if you got that okay. These problems here take quite a bit of practice, I think. Now the nice thing is once you practice them, they kind of just roll off the tongue inside your brain, I suppose. You just kind of do them and they make sense. But uh, they're not much fun to watch, to be honest. You really have to engage and try some. So there'll be some on the homework this week. So try them all. They're a lot of fun.